basics of the user interface between CPM3 and CPM2 aren't really that different. As you see, we still have our prompt with the drive letter in it. I can still switch to another drive by typing the drive letter followed by a colon. Directory command still works. But there are differences. Back here on drive A, if we take a look at the directory, you can see the cpm3.sys file. That'll, that'll be there now on every bootable disk, like we mentioned. That is CPM itself, the image. Also, there's now this ccp.com file. Again, the CCP is no longer loaded in high memory and considered part of CPM. It is now just the normal .com file that can be run like any other .com. If I type CCP, it literally loaded a new copy of CCP, and now that's what we're running. Of course, they're identical, but um, we're now running, quote, the new one. These are not nested. It literally transferred control to it. Another thing that's interesting some of the intrinsic commands are out here as .com. See, here's directory.com, here's rename.com, here's erase.com, somewhere out here is type.com, there's type.com. So the question then comes up, do you think these are now no longer intrinsic commands? Well, the answer is yes, they're still intrinsic commands. If I type dir, that was done without calling dir.com. However, the manuals for CPM3 define new options for these intrinsic commands. Oops. For example, um, the size option for the directory now gives you uh, a listing of files along with sizes and other good information. Kind of thing that was only doable with a third party package, third party program before. So here we see we have a, a sorted list of files left to right and then down the page along with sizes and how much space is left. So when you type the directory command and follow it with an option inside brackets. Now, technically, the right bracket is not required. Uh, the CCP looks at that and says, okay, I recognize that command. However, because it has options, I can't run it. So it then goes out and it gets the dir.com file to run it. And now we get our extended function. And there's also another of uh, a number of other features that have been added to the directory command. Likewise, erase still works intrinsically. For example, I can erase dir.com. That was done in, in without going out and running erase.com. However, if you use one of the new versions of it, you can, you can type it all out or just DRA um, and say confirm, for example. Oops, I gotta give it a file name. Let's do erase asterisk.com and confirm it. The CCP looks and says, I recognize erase. However, they're asking for the confirm option. I don't run that intrinsically, so it goes out and it loads the erase.com file. And so now you see you have this confirm option where you can say yes or no to every single file. I'm just going to abort that because I don't really want to delete any of those. So there's another uh, new feature in erase. And directory and erase and type and rename, all of these have additional options other than the ones I'm just showing you here. Now we've deleted dir.com. As you see, dir still runs. So it is intrinsic. However, as you might expect, if you do this, it fails because it says dir.com is required. All right, so these are in the CPM3 manual, um, and we'll see in the next video, there's now a help system online, well, online, um, on the floppy that you can access to help you with some of these commands. Um, but anyway, so they extended the commands, and this is how it's done by having .com versions that do the extra work that the intrinsic version in CCP doesn't. All right, so what else might you do? You might be tempted to hit the stack command in order to see how much free disk space you have, and it doesn't work. The stack command was used for several different things in CPM2. Disk size, uh, display the disk parameter header, uh, change I.O. devices like console and reader and list device, show what the settings are, change the read-write status. It was the only way in the past to get a list of files with sizes without running a third-party program. So what they've done is taken stat and broken it up into other programs that make more sense instead of making stat a catch-all. The show command is equivalent a stat with no commands, no options at all. It shows you the free space on your disks that have been mounted. So here we see how much free space is on the two drives. Um, the show command with the drive option is equivalent to stat with the uh, DSK option, where it shows you basically the drive parameter header information for the current drive, or you can specify a drive on that line. Um, like I mentioned, the old command stat asterisk dot asterisk, that was a way to get a listing of all the files on your disk with sizes, but now, like you saw, the directory command can do that. And that's a better command to have displaying file information anyway, is the directory command. 
a stat was also used in order to um, show you how the various I.O. devices were assigned. For example, the console, the reader, the punch, and the list devices. The uh, equivalent in CPM3 is the device command. So the device command shows you the mapping of the console, auxiliary, and list to physical devices. You see reader and punch are gone, and now we have auxiliary. So auxiliary in, replace reader in, or reader, and auxiliary out, replace punch. And we can assign these just as con, aux, and list, or as you can see, you can specifically access in and out for a console and auxiliary and change those independently of each other. So again, aux in, aux out took the place of reader and punch, but console, you didn't used to be able to do that um, independently for in and out. So that's, that's a new feature. The other thing that's changed here is the physical device names. The physical device names used to be pretty meaningless. They were like CRT, TTY, UC1, UL2, that kind of thing. Now the BIOS can assign physical device names itself. So this is a BIOS for Altair. You notice the physical device names are listed up here. It can be port A on a 2SIO, port B on a 2SIO. It can be the original SIO board, the 88 SIO, that's a different board. Or it can be the ACR, the cassette recorder, where you could read and write straight to and from Altair tapes. So now looking down here, you see the current assignments for console, auxiliary, and list. Uh, the console is going to 2SIO A, the port A on the 2SIO. It's also showing the B port. I'll discuss that in just a second. And right now the auxiliary and list are both going to the second port on a 2SIO. Um, so the change in assignment, you could say auxiliary equals ACR. And you can see it's assigned both aux in and aux out to the ACR. So that'd be a way to bring in tapes or write out tapes uh, straight to the Altair cassette recorder. Likewise, you can assign just the input half or the output half if you want. So here we've done input from an SIO. Output is still going to the, SI, the cassette recorder. So theoretically, you could bring in a file through the SIO and write it back out to the cassette port if you wanted. So it's similar to what was in CPM2 with the IO byte. However, the IO byte mechanism has been eliminated for something that's more flexible like we're seeing here. Um, the one big thing that I haven't shown you yet is you can actually add multiple assignments to a device. So what this is telling me here is the console is going not only to the port A on the 2SIO, it's going to port B as well. Everything going out goes to both devices. Input will come from either device. In fact, this entire video, I have been typing on a completely different console rather than the one that's being videoed here uh, to make my life easier for me. And that is connected to the SIO B port. Let me zoom back here. Not that you can necessarily see the screens, but you can see that everything I've been doing up here shows up on this screen. And likewise, anything I do here will show up on the screen on the right. So that's a pretty flexible new feature that was added with uh, CPM3. Just like the IO byte, it has to be supported in the BIOS. It's optional, CPM will function without it, but it certainly makes for some pretty neat features. All right, there's lots more to go. I'm gonna make another video to follow on after this one to start going through some of the more some more of the new features, but that'll do it for this video. Now in this video, the computer we used is actually the Altair 8800 clone computer. This computer accurately duplicates the look, the feel, the features, performance, and the limitations of the original Altair 8800, but it does it with modern hardware on the inside so that you don't have to worry about damaging a vintage computer or getting it up and running and trying to keep it up and running. So it's a great way to relive this period in history, even though we're getting to the end of that period, uh, without having to worry about damaging some expensive collector's piece. Be sure to visit AltairClone.com to learn more about this computer.